Welcome to episode 9, and in this one, we're actually going to be designing a quick website and uh, coding it. And it's not going to be a complete actual website, but we will do that in a, a future video. But for right now, we're just going to do really just a simple page. And it's not going to have that much design in it, but it's just going to be a little something. So hopefully we can just put everything that we've learned in the past to work and maybe even learn a little bit more in this episode. So I like to design in Photoshop. You don't have to. You can use whatever photo editor you want. Or some people just like coding. They don't even like doing the design beforehand. They just go right into their browser, plug in some CSS, and just keep editing until it comes out how they want. Either way is perfectly fine. I'm going to show you how I do it. So I'm going to go to a new file here. <clears throat> And let's make this, let's say a thousand by 600. It's not really going to matter in this example because uh, it's going to be very, very simple. I'm actually going to make it a little bit taller. It's a bit short. Let's make it a thousand by 900. Okay. So now we have this uh, basic little window here. <clears throat> and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to double click on my background to make it a layer and let's make the background of this uh, a lightish gray. That looks good. <clears throat> and now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, put a nice little border on the top. I just like that effect. So I'm going to choose almost black there and just drag this across the top. like so and it's a bit tall so I'll just nudge it up a little bit we'll leave it like that and uh, the next thing we'll do is we'll grab our text tool here and let's change this to Georgia I like that font it's nice and simple and maybe choose an orangish color I kinda like that uh, let's see that looks good and maybe we'll type something out here so uh, this awesome page obviously you gotta make that a little bit smaller okay and I want to make this italic just like that and maybe bold italic would look nicer. Nah, I think I like it the other way. And uh, we'll keep that like that and then maybe add a little subtitle. Like that. And uh, we'll make this a, uh, a light gray. Make it much smaller. Uh, maybe make it all caps. Uh, get rid of the italic nudge it up a little bit a little bit smaller there we go, I kinda like that and um, now I'm going to make another text box down here and I'm gonna drag this one out so we only get um, that space there so in other words, the lines will, uh, you know, it'll be, uh, how should I say this? The lines will go on to the, the, the text will go on to the next line. That's what I meant to say, rather than uh, just going on forever. And I'm going to go into my dashboard here and take a quick paragraph. Um, I'll make this a much dark gray. Actually, I'll make it the color of up here take off that all caps get a little bit smaller and increase the line height because I always like some breathing room in my lines there okay <clears throat> and now let's say we want to add a little quote maybe so I'm just going to take this resize it if I can grab this handle here to like there. Let's 
pretty good. It will make it a little bit lighter. And uh, maybe a little bigger. And let's see. Italic maybe? Yeah, we'll just leave it like that. Uh, duplicate this. And we'll add another paragraph. I'll grab a new one here. Okay, there we go. Now, this obviously isn't a good design at all, but this is just something so that I could show you how you would make something like this. So, uh, let's just keep this over here, and we'll go into Coda or whatever text editor you're using, and I'm still using this same little setup uh, that we pretty much have been using forever now. Still linked up to the same style sheet. I'll actually remove all the stuff in there. And uh, so let's start. So the first thing we have to do is, um, well, we had to set the background color. So I'm going to call in body. And uh, we have to get the background here. Um, the way I do that is uh, I use a utility called Digital Color Meter. And this is actually uh, pre-installed on your Mac. It's in your application slash utilities folder. And you could just go over any color and just hit Shift Command C. And that will copy it. And so this way I can just paste it right in. If you're on Windows or you just don't feel like doing that, you can just click on your foreground color and then use the eyedropper tool and then just copy whatever hex color it is. Either way, you get the same effect. And uh, the other thing I have to do with body is, I'm not sure if I mentioned this in a previous video, but body actually does have margin on it by default. So I'm gonna get rid of that by typing margin zero. And if I pull this up in my browser here, actually I'll just go right into it and double click it. Uh, you see that we have that same background. Okay, <clears throat> now uh, let's see. I wanna create that little border on top. So to do that, I can just use border top on my body element here. And what we have to do is we have to figure out how tall this black uh, border is. So. In Photoshop, if you go to your preferences and units and rulers, you could set your rulers to pixels. Then if you hit Command R, you can show your rulers. And if we zoom in here, go all the way up, we can kind of tell where it is. So um, even that's a little bit difficult sometimes. So I'll just zoom in a little bit more and it's seven pixels. Uh, if you don't want to go through all that, you can download a little application that I like, if you Google free ruler, it's uh, actually a pixel ruler that you can just load right up. It takes a few seconds to open up, um, but once it does, you can actually drag it around to wherever you want and just uh, get the size of anything. So I'll show you that. You can see we could just drag this over there and uh, then just use your mouse to figure out how tall it is. See, it says it's seven pixels on the left hand side but that's a little bit hard because you really have to get exact positioning there whichever one you want to do it's fine so let me just say border top seven pixel solid and I'll grab that color and now we have that border on the top of our page so the next thing to do is let's start doing the HTML here. So this can kind of be a header. So I'll say H1 and this awesome page. Then I'll go into an H2 for the subtitle. And I'll just type is awesome. And uh, let's start with that. So first of all, our H1, we know a bunch of things here. First of all, it has to be uh, Georgia. And since the entire website is in Georgia, I might as well just take that and put it on our body element. So if I go font family, I'll type in Georgia. Let's say it'll fall back to Times New Roman. If it doesn't have that, then we'll go to Times. And if it doesn't have that, we'll go to whatever serif font is available. And for H1, we need to first set it to 62 pixels. 
So font size is 62 pixels. Then uh, font style is italic. And let's grab this color. I actually already have it in my foreground. So uh, color is that. And let's see what else. Let me go preview that now. And uh, okay, so H1 and H2 both automatically uh, have that um, bold effect. So I'm just gonna get rid of that by saying font weight is uh, normal. And then if we preview that, we get the right effect here. Now you'll notice that this isn't centered and I'm actually gonna do that last and show you how that works. So the next thing is the H1 has a few margins on it. The first one will be margin top here. And that's kind of difficult to do <clears throat> in Photoshop because, you know, we'd have to start from the seven pixel mark and then go to wherever it is here. So there's two things I would do. I would either use free ruler or I could just eyeball it until I'm happy with it. So let's see, I'll just drag this in here and it's about, let's see, oh, I'm at inches. That's not good. Uh, pixels, here we go. It's about 76 pixels. And when you're working with really big pixel values like that, a lot of times it doesn't have to be precise. So in this example, it doesn't really matter. So even if I'm off by a few pixels, it's not a big deal. And let me just actually pull up free ruler again, because there's also a margin bottom to separate it from is awesome, which is about 27 pixels. So margin bottom is 27 pixels. And now if we preview this, uh, we get the same thing. This huge gap is just because is awesome still has a margin top. We'll fix that in a second. Let's go into our H2 here. And first of all, let's say font variant, or not font variant, let's say font, uh, let me think here. No, let's do text transform. And we'll make that uppercase, just like it is in the example. And the color is this here color and uh, it is 22 pixels so font size is 22 pixels and margin top we can get rid of it because there's already a margin on the bottom of the H1 and font weight is normal if we preview this let's see what's happening here I'm gonna actually go into inspect element and uh, it seems like the margin that we have on the H1 is just too big. So I'll just adjust that. What happens when free ruler fails, you just use your eye. So make it even a little bit smaller than that. Maybe even two pixels. Okay, that looks fine. And so now let's just add a little margin bottom for is awesome and load up free ruler again. Drag this over here. It's about 45 pixels. So H2 margin bottom is 45 pixels. And now let's go ahead and add in all our content. So I'm gonna use three P's here because that's essentially what we have, three paragraphs. And I'll just go ahead and copy all of this right from Photoshop so I don't have to type it all in again. Okay. And now in style, I'm gonna say P. And let's say the color of all these P's has to be this color. And the size has to be 19 pixels. Uh, let's see here. I'm just gonna go preview that now. Ah, we have to set the line height, that's right. Uh, let's just go into this here, and the line height is 28 pixels. So you can go back right here and say line height, 28 
28 pixels and that should do it for that now we also have to set uh, this second paragraph to have this special little style so the first thing I'm going to do is just apply a class of edit or oh, not a class of edit I should say a uh, class of quote and I'll actually make that an ID because we only have one of them so I'll call it using pound sign quote and what we have to do here is first the color is different I remember that and the font size is 23 pixel pixels and let's see what else the line height is still 28 so we can leave that as is and it has a margin left here so I can pull up free ruler again and just check this out it's about 86 pixels so if we go preview this that looks about right if we just have to get that italic now so font style is italic there we go and now finally let's just make this all centered now if we want to center this entire thing, there's a lot of elements to center here. So I'm actually going to wrap this all in one single element. So I'll call that using a div. So I'll just put all of these elements inside one div. And I'll give this div a, an ID of wrapper. And now what we can do is we can go into the div or I should say we can go into the wrapper and we can give this one a width so uh, free ruler again it's about let's see 700 pixels I'll just round it off at 700 so we'll say width is 700 pixels and if we preview that you can see all the content is staying at that width now because it's all wrapped in that one div and then we can just use margin zero auto as we discussed before to center that content and there we go it's the same thing as our Photoshop file again I know this isn't an actual design and it doesn't look good at all really <laughs> But uh, it's just showing you how you can easily just take something that you made in Photoshop or any other photo editor and just easily convert that to CSS code. It's only a short little process and you can see I did this in, I don't know, 20 minutes or something like that. So it's really not difficult and uh, I, hope you, I hope this has helped you just a little bit to see really how easy it is to go right from design to actual production.